This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at the topic that's all about integrated reporting. Uh, so if we think about integrated reporting, there's been a lot of questions asked recently, hasn't there, about the usefulness of our annual report. So, you know, is all the information that's contained within there useful? Okay, you know, these annual reports getting bigger and bigger and bigger, aren't they? So, like hundreds of pages long, okay. Uh, is it presented in a coherent manner? Okay, is, is it easily understood? Uh, does it flow well throughout the document? Possibly not. Uh, and is it consistent between organisations? Uh, okay, the, the actual, uh, the numbers themselves, okay, uh, follow international financial reporting standards, don't they? So there's consistency there. But what about the, the non-financial information? Okay, the financial information within the financial statements is fine, but if you think about your annual report being the back is the financial statements and then the front, all the information to do with the management commentary, uh, maybe an operating and financial review, maybe the director's report, the chairman's report, uh, an environmental report, corporate and social responsibility report. Uh, what, what underpins those? Okay, the, 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 There's not a common set of guidelines to go through and follow. So it's potentially to all those questions there, you you could answer no to all of them, couldn't we? Okay, because uh, some of that information just becomes a little bit too much clutter, doesn't it? Okay, it doesn't seem to be coherent, and there's a lack of consistency between those large listed companies. So, you know, what limitations on top of that do we have within the annual report? Uh, it's historic, isn't it? It looks to the past. There's nothing forward-looking about it, and there is, as we've said, lots and lots of narrative to help. Okay, but. That just explains what's happened in the past. Okay, as I've said, it's cluttered, it's unhelpful. And the big issue that we've had is, you know, there has been guidance, but it's built up over time. There's very much this, this silo approach, okay? It's never been all brought together as one to give an overall encompassing view of what the company's done in the past, what the company's doing in the future, and also to think about the financial and non-financial aspects as well, okay? So if you think about it here, you know, in, in the 60s, way back, we just used to have the financial statements. It was all very much numerical, wasn't it? But uh, that just focused on the financial position, the performance of a business. And, and as time evolved, investors and stakeholders wanted to know a bit more about the business, didn't it? So on top of that, we started introducing environmental reporting, management commentaries, and then reports to do with the governance and the structure of the board and how the directors were remunerated, okay, to seeing that they were getting paid appropriately for the performance that was being put out there by the business itself, okay? Uh, as time further evolved, there was a much bigger focus upon those, wasn't it? Uh, so each of those four aspects individually grew, didn't they? But there's never really been one cog to pull it all together, okay? And that's what integrated reporting is trying to do, okay? It's trying to be the, the, the centre ground, the focus of everything, so that you can have one overall integrated report that means that there's a lot less clutter, that means that there is comparability and that the information contained within the financial statements is more useful and more importantly, understandable. Okay, You, know, you read through financial statements these days and, and the, the associated nonsense that goes around it, you know, a lot of it is, is very difficult to understand, isn't it? So if we can keep it nice and simple, it's going to help, you know. Some of the reasons why this has happened over the past that, that we need to move our attention away just from the numbers is if you think about intangible and tangible assets, okay? Uh, so the, there's a business there, Ocean Tomo, that have gone through there and done a, 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 a regular survey of the value of businesses, okay? And in 1975, you can see there that the value of your tangibles far outweighed the value of your intangibles, but look what's happened now. As we move into, I wouldn't say the present day, because 2009, quite scary to say, quite a while ago, isn't it? Uh, you can see that businesses have changed, okay? There's less reliance on tangibles and more focus on intangibles, aren't there? Okay. And when you think about that, why? Uh, well, we've moved much more into technology, haven't we? The, 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 the internet. Uh, you know, a lot of that doesn't involve tangible assets. It's all intangible, isn't it? In terms of idea generation, uh, and being able to come up with the latest product, uh, new idea, new ways of presenting things, you know, 
at the moment facebook have recently launched facebook live haven't they okay uh, again that generates wealth generates value for the business it's another intangible asset there's nothing tangible about it okay uh, so the issue that we've got there is the accounting for intangibles yeah we have is 38 and we know how to account for them but there's a lot of intangibles that don't exist within the financial statements do they so all of a sudden there's a huge portion of a business that is not being accounted for and not visual to the users of the accounts so we need to do something about it okay and that's led to a lack of confidence in your annual reports uh, the ACCA we've previously done a study understanding investors directions for corporate reporting and that found that a good proportion of directors okay or I should say invested has lost faith in financial reports okay uh, the global financial crisis of 2008 you know there was there's huge write-offs of all these financial assets we have now done something about it haven't we we've developed an accounting standard that begins to look at the impairment of financial assets and it's a much improved standard but uh, it was only after things had happened that we began to do something about it okay uh, people don't have the confidence that they previously had in your company reports likewise as well uh, all the research is being carried out that has shown that the use of the accounts aren't just predominantly the shareholders, they're other stakeholders as well. And the other stakeholders aren't just concerned with the financial performance, they're thinking about integrity-based issues, so more focused towards uh, environmental reporting, uh, more focus uh, in terms of where businesses have generated their profits, in terms of what has been used within the business to make it successful, and how we have used the finance within the business, you know, wanting a little bit more detail about the business's operations, so the solution is this integrated report prepared or, or, or not prepared we prepare the integrated report don't we uh, but the international integrated reporting council are the folk behind the framework okay and what we need to be able to go through and do is understand what an integrated report is and what is contained within that framework okay so it goes through there uh, the ceo of the international integrated reporting council uh, says it's a concise communication. I like that second word, concise. About time we had something that was concise about an organization's strategy, governance, performance, and prospects. Again, I like that word prospect because it makes things forward looking, doesn't it? Uh, in the contents of an external environment, so not just thinking about things internally, what's going on in the wider field around the business that leads to the creation of value. So, wanting to show how we've used resources within the business to create value because that's what shareholders want isn't it okay uh, they want value to be created but the stakeholders the fire for that value to be created but they want to ensure that it's done in an appropriate fashion isn't it okay so i think the key points that to draw from there is that it is concise it thinks about the prospects and also value okay so, so what is it uh well an integrated report has to be a specific and identifiable communication so it can't be spread out uh, amongst the company report like you have currently with the management commentary in one part uh, your governance uh, report in one place the environmental report in another it's all over the place and so it's a single report okay you need to be able to identify it from the rest of the company report and it can either be standalone so you could take it out of the company report and produce it separately it might be useful okay but then it might get ignored okay because we're just focusing on the company report or it could be part of that company or annual report okay it's entirely up to the business how they prepare to do it uh, and it should be more than a summary i know it said we should be have a concise report uh, but it needs to be you know not just a brief summary it needs to have a little bit uh, of useful information in there and i like the word there the connectivity of information uh, it's not trying to just look at again like a silo approach in individual areas it's trying to look at how different areas of the business are linked to ensure that value is created. And it doesn't necessarily just look at the, the positives. It can also look on the, on the negatives as well. If we look at the objectives of your integrated reporting, uh, I think from what we've seen previously, you would understand, yes, that we're trying to improve the quality of the information. Okay. Uh, it wants to be a little bit more cohesive. So instead of having it as a silo approach, remember the integrated report was there as the cog that drew everything together. Uh, we want to go through there and enhance accountability that there's been thoughts, haven't there, that the directors aren't accountable for their actions and how they run the business. 
So what we do here is we look at what are referred to as the capitals uh, and how they go through there and manage each of the capitals within the business. Uh, think of the capitals as these value drivers or value creators. So you have the, is it your social, your human, intellectual, natural, uh, financial and manufactured. I haven't read them out in the same way there. Uh, there it says financial, manufactured. I'll read them. Intellectual, human, social uh, and natural. Uh, the reason I wrote the road, read them out slightly differently is because we can make up a mnemonic. Uh, Shin FM is the only one I can think of. S-H-I-N, Shin. So the bone at the bottom of your leg, okay, at the front, your shin bone. And FM, uh, it's a radio frequency, isn't it? Not really in existence anymore because everything's digital. But uh, FM, frequency modulation, what that stood for. But now it's financial and manufactured capitals. The Shin, social human, intellectual, natural capitals. Remember them. Uh, we want to promote the understanding of their interdependencies, so really focus on how they do go through and link together. Uh, and then go through there and support this idea of integrated thinking. Okay, and that By integrating the different aspects of the business, that will go through and hopefully create value. Not just in the short term, I really like how the, the Integrated Reporting Council have tried to think about this by getting businesses to focus more on the medium to long term as well. You know, that's a criticism, isn't it, of Western business, is that it's very short term, profit focused, wealth generative, without thinking about the long term effects. Okay, if we can do that, it's going to be beneficial all around, isn't it? Uh, so what are the underlying concepts? Uh, well, there's three. The first one are thinking about those capitals. So they are the resources, if you like, that are used uh, within the business. Remember, you've got your mnemonic Shin FM, uh, social, human, intellectual, natural, financial, manufacturing. You will remember it after a while. And then what we also have there is the concept of there in terms of the value creation. Uh, so again, thinking about the interactions and how that we can draw on those value drivers to go through there and create value uh, and then looking at uh, the process that a business goes through in terms of looking at its business model and how that business model can link in to those value drivers thinking not just about the internal but also the external consequences as well okay so if we think about the capitals uh, you've got them there if you want any huge amounts of detail, uh, it's worthwhile going to the International Integrated Reporting Council's website and just having a, a wander through there because there is some useful information. There's some really useful real world examples. So I want you to do a little bit of work yourself, a bit of research if you so wish. Uh, but first of all, make sure that you know what the capitals are and then what they mean. So, you know, if you're thinking about your financial capital, uh, that's businesses thinking about how they raise their finance and then how they use that finance there to invest within some positive net present value projects, isn't it? Uh, maybe there's been some form of government grant uh, that the business has received. Again, how do they go through there and use that finance to go through there and create value? Why have they chosen a particular form of finance as opposed to another? You know, in your financial statements previously, you would have just seen a movement in debt, a movement in equity. Uh, more interest in the statement of profit or loss, more dividends than your statement of change in equity. Now we're trying to say, well, look, this is the reason why we have chosen it. Okay. Uh, your manufacturer is thinking about the, the resources that you have, thinking about the, the tangible assets that you've got within your business. So have you used the, the, the offices, the warehouses, the, the machinery? But don't just think about what you've manufactured. Think about how, you know, the, the structure around your business is also being used, okay, those tangible assets. So uh, say if you're a port and you've created a new port uh, or extended your port to make it bigger to go through there and take bigger ships, because you know, some of these ships now are getting huge, aren't they, in terms of carrying cargo all around the world. Great, you've invested in new equipment there, but has there been any investment in terms of the infrastructure, in terms of the road links, the rail links? If there has, great. If there hasn't, then, how are the, the goods that get to the port then going to get taken around the rest of the country? If there's a, a, a lack of structure in terms of the road, lack of structure in terms of the rail, you can build the greatest port that's ever been known to humankind, but all the goods are just going to let, get left at the port because they can't be found to get anywhere else out of the port using the infrastructure around. 
uh, intellectual capital. Uh, that's thinking more, isn't it, about the intangible side of the business that you have in terms of idea generation, uh, how you've created those ideas, what is the potential to do into the future. Again, you can start to link them together, can't we? You know, if you're thinking about intellectual capital uh, and coming up with ideas in the future, that will give you potential new products. Uh, how are we then going to go through and raise the finance for that new product? It's very difficult, isn't it, to be creative and then have the confidence of investors in your creativity to take the money from the investors to invest it in that idea. You have to really convince the investors that it's a worthwhile investment, don't we? In terms of the human capital, that's looking at your staff. Uh, how do we ensure that we maintain the level of staff that we have? Uh, how do we ensure that we keep the key individuals? Again, you know, previously, there's just been a remuneration report, hasn't it, for the directors? Well, you know, what, what, why have we paid them X million? Why have we given them X million share options? Why is there this bonus? Why all of a sudden have they got an increase in their pension? Okay. You know, we need to make sure there that that payment is actually creating value and keeping the best directors and the best staff on board. In terms of natural, we're thinking about the use of your natural resources, uh, the, the earth, the, the ground, uh, water, okay, wind. Now, thinking very much about new reusable technology and reusable energy, okay? And then your social and relationship is thinking there, isn't it? About how we go through and interact with, with the wider community, okay? Are we going through there and running charitable causes? Are we going through there uh, and offering our help and advice? You know, could we be helping local businesses to, to try and start up? Okay, it might take time uh, out of our staff day-to-day -day working schedule. But if someone can set up a business that can then supply us, maybe we can get the goods cheaper. There'll be a better working relationship. So, you know, is there any communication about that currently? No. Maybe the integrated report could go through and, and, and think about how and what we are doing. Okay. And you'll see a lot of businesses uh, within their marketing at the moment, you know, really focusing on the social and relationship aspect of things. And you see more of that within the integrated report. Okay. Excellent. Again, what you will then find is that the more a business acts upon its social and relationship responsibilities, the more that your human capital will benefit because people will like to work and do other things aside from their day-to-day -day job. Okay, And that will mean that you keep the best employees and it will promote confidence and therefore that will drive results and drive value, won't it? So those capitals are pretty important. In terms of the building blocks of an integrated report, uh, they are the guiding principles and the content elements. Okay, uh, so the principles are talking about what you should physically contain within the report. Okay, uh, oh, sorry, the guiding principles are showing you how to prepare it. Okay, uh, and then the content elements is what you should actually have uh, within the report itself. Okay. Uh, so within the notes, uh, the guiding principles, I'd make sure that, that, that you know what the guiding principles are. Uh, in the notes, we've listed them out. We just go through here and just expand upon them a little bit further. Uh, so your guiding principles, first one is your strategic focus and future orientation. Uh, so that's going through then looking at your organization strategy, where you're going into the future. Uh, the connectivity of your information. So that's, you know, again, trying to emphasize there what you should be doing in terms of trying to link together uh, those seven separate capitals. Don't think about them in isolation. OK, uh, stakeholder relationships. So do think about your key stakeholders when you are talking about those six capitals, because it's not just a focus on your shareholders. Now, the stakeholders have an interest in your business materiality it needs to be concise doesn't it okay uh so to improve the conciseness make sure we only go through there and talk about and disclose items that are material okay if it's immaterial ignore it uh, it needs to be concise again there's no measure of conciseness but try not to go overboard on the information that is provided it needs to be reliable and complete if it's not reliable do not include it. Uh, if it isn't complete, make sure it is categorically stated uh, that it is incomplete. For something to be reliable, we need to focus, as I said earlier, on not just the positives, but also uh, the negatives. And then that needs to be consistent. 
you know, because if it is consistent, so what you do this year is the same as what you do next year. So you've got those capitals. Don't chop and change the, the ones that you report. You know, you don't have to report on all of them. You know, you need to focus on the ones that are the key value drivers. But don't change every single year what you determine are the key value drivers. Okay, it, it, it just leads to a lack of consistency and then there's no comparability. Will there uh, be year on year or entity on entity? Okay. Uh, so the principles that you should uphold in its preparation. In terms of what should actually go in, uh, there should be an overview of the external environment. So, you know, literally telling us what we do and how we operate. Again, we do see that already, don't we? IFRS 8 operating segments. That tells us all about the organisation, what it does, what it's held within the notes to the accounts, isn't it? Throw it into your integrated report and it's there to go through and see clearly. Uh, governance, we had a separate governance report, so make sure now that the governance report is contained uh, within your integrated report, okay, and how that structure helps us create value. What is your business model? How do you go through there and operate, okay? Are you a cost leader? Uh, are you there a differentiator, okay? You know, how do we go through there and set up our, our business structure, okay? Uh, is it the uh, a wide based business structure okay with lots of subsidiaries or is it very narrow in terms of its focus with one subsidiary uh, and lower level managers okay uh, what risks are you faced with so that brings about if you like thinking a little bit about how you manage them and links it into to your hedging okay uh, what's your strategy uh, so you know where are you going to go? How are you going to get there? Again, that, that will be contained within the annual report currently, but it will be probably within the chairman's report, or the director's report. Okay, And again, you've got to be careful here in terms of the conciseness. You don't want to go and say everything to the whole entire wide world. You've got to make sure that you give enough information that, that, that does go through and show how you're going to generate value into the future. Uh, we still need to think about the financial aspect and, and your performance. So was it a good or was it a bad performance? Could it have been even better? Could it have been even worse? Have we done well in, in quite difficult economic circumstances? Um, not thinking about your strategy, but what is the outlook? What's the, the economic climate looking like? How do you think you're going to go through there and address it? Because the more you give there in terms of information, the better the decision-making capabilities will be of the users of your accounts. And if you can contain this in one integrated report, it's going to be really, really useful, isn't it? Particularly if it is concise. My only issue is that the few that I have seen, some of them are not concise. But maybe that's my definition of concise. might be different to, to what other people believe as being concise. Uh, the final bit there, in terms of content, the preparation and presentation okay uh, so if there are issues in terms of comparability if there are issues in terms of reliability and relevance and completeness make sure that uh, that you explain how those matters have been evaluated okay uh, key bit it's not a checklist so you don't literally go through there and, and check everything off uh, but it just makes sure that, that you've got those areas that you can then have a bit of interconnectivity uh, between those key capital drivers of the business okay uh, just a little bit of real world to throw in there to finish it off uh, a quote from the CEO of coca-cola okay uh, integrated reporting reflects how our community or how our company thinks and does business this approach allows us to discuss material issues facing our business and communities and show how we create value for shareholders and for society as a whole. I think that's a big issue at the moment, isn't it? All these large listed corporations, uh, they're so big, you know, some of them, the, 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 the revenue and the profits are bigger than the GDP uh, of some of the smaller countries in the world and bigger than most of the GDP of countries in Africa. Uh, so it's about focusing on society and how they can do more to help people around them as opposed to just solely focusing on increasing shareholder wealth. So, only time will tell uh, how successful it will be. If companies like Coca-Cola uh, are adopting it, then that's a good start, isn't it? Uh, the more businesses that adopt it, the more we will be able to compare. And the better that will be in, in terms of how we drive reporting and corporate reporting and annual reporting 
into the future. So let's go through and apply what we've just spoken through uh, to some of the examples that you would get lightly in the exam. Okay. Uh, I do think, however, before we touch upon these examples that we've got there, which are very knowledge focused, I do think that uh, integrated reporting and your global reporting initiative as a topic lends itself really well for the case study, doesn't it? In terms of discussing what it is and how it relates to the company that's given to you within the case study. So I think it's very worthwhile uh, whenever you've got a business within your case study, whatever sitting it is that you are sitting for, uh, to think about the GRI and the integrated report as well. Okay, uh, just think about what they would include and what they would do and why they are doing so. Uh, but from a objective taste, objective taste, objective test question perspective, uh, and looking at your F3 exam, we just need to know what the contents are, okay, of your integrated report. Uh, so thinking about the capitals. Uh, thinking about the content elements, thinking about the guiding principles. Okay, uh, so what you've got there in the first example, it says which of the following uh, are defined by the integrated reporting framework as capitals. Now you've got to be really careful because when we spoke about the capitals, we said there were six. We mentioned the mnemonic Sheen FM. Okay. Uh, so first of all, what you can see there is that conciseness doesn't start with an S, an H, an I, an N, an F or an M. We can rule that out. Uh, and then what you've got there is you just need to be very, very careful. okay? Because the four remaining answers have an M, a H, an S and an I. So you think, right, tick, 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 tick. But be very careful because when you think about the S, yeah, uh, the S is for your social and relationship, isn't it? Not for sustainable. Okay. Uh, H is human. So that's fine. I is the, your intellectual. Okay. Uh, S H I N. N is for natural. It's not the F is for financial. It's not the M is for your manufactured, isn't it? Okay, not materiality. So be very, very careful. Of those five, only two are capitals, okay? Uh, if we go through there and look at the guiding principles, boy, oh boy. Uh, it's probably easier to go through there and think, well, guiding principles are not capitals. So if I can spot any capitals, it won't be those, will it? Well, you've got the, is it manufactured? That's a capital, so it's not uh, a guiding principle, okay? Uh, social and relationship, that is a guiding principle, isn't it? So that is not, uh, sorry, social and relationship is a capital. It's not a guiding principle, is it? Okay, so you're then left with four. Uh, materiality, conciseness, reliability and completeness, and your business model, okay? Uh, well, the principles, the ideas behind our report, aren't they? So materiality, yes, that's a guiding principle, isn't it? Because we want to make sure there that we only talk about material items, okay? Uh, material capitals, if you like. So materiality is within there. Concise, that's a guiding principle. You know, we want to make sure that it is as concise as what is possible, okay? Uh, we want it to be reliable. We want it to be complete. Uh, but the business model isn't a guiding principle, is it? Is it? Okay. Uh, it's not a principle that we need to follow in terms of its preparation. It's one of the content elements that should be there, isn't it? Okay. It's going to be quite a challenge. I think the best thing to do is to try and learn the capitals. And that's the easiest bit. I would then maybe go through there and try and learn the guiding principles and then if it was a question that said which of the following are content elements you could then use those capitals and guiding principles to use a process of elimination to work out what the content elements are or alternatively you could learn all three it's entirely up to you but i'm just giving you hints and tips to try and make your life easier at the end of the day you need to know them all don't you okay if you're going to go forward and look at the case study be your last exam imagine that'd be such a great feeling to get through it and pass your fully qualified seam or accountant 
uh, once you've got there, you know, that, what word am I looking for? Uh, that case study, okay? Yeah, the case study is very much more written, isn't it? Uh, there's not a huge amount of computation in there, so you might be able to apply the knowledge from your integrated reporting and global reporting initiative uh, into a situation that, that you have within your case study. So just make note of it. Other than that, that's this chapter done and dusted. I will see you in the next chapter when we begin to look at your financial management policy decisions that you have to make, looking at your investing decisions, financing decisions, and is it there your dividend decisions, and then encompassing all of that with the level of risk that you are faced with. Other than that, I'll take a break between now and then because that next chapter, particularly when we look at risk and hedging, is really going to make your head hurt. Other than that, take care and I'll see you next time.